Yes, people, what's happening? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another edition of Five Things We Learned. First things first, guys, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell notification button. And let's dive into the show. And again, this weekend, there was another disappointing performance from the Blues, going down 1-0 at home to Aston Villa with a copy and paste performance from pretty much every game so far this season. More disappointment, uh, more questions than we've currently got answers for and some new things that we've learned and other things that remain the same and remain a constant issue. And that's going to bring me up to my first point I want to raise. And Maurizio Pochettino's tactics and selections are quite frankly baffling to me at this point in time. Uh, the first one I want to dive into is playing Levi Colwell at left back and leaving three left backs on the bench. That that to me just doesn't make any sense. I don't know why we're doing it. Look, Colwell acquitted himself well, but we've got the presence of Kukurea and Chilwell on the bench, not to mention Ian Martin as well. But again, it was Levi Colwell that started at left back uh, for us against Aston Villa. Look, I'm not criticising Colwell because I thought he acquitted himself well on that left-hand side. He, you know, he was tight to the touchline. Um, but again, he was he was he was using it less than than a more conventional fullback would do. Um, but that, again, did allow Mudrick more space to cause Villa some problems, of course. But look, we know that Colwell offers solidity and quality passing from that left-back position. But it raises questions as to why is he being shoehorned into a position which is not a natural fit for him? And it's a player that clearly excels in the, cent in the central of defence. And, you know, one of the most exciting young, uh, young and coming players at centre-back. Yeah, he's being shoehorned in at left-back. It doesn't make sense. And again, this decision from Poch will also naturally lead to, you know, questions being asked regarding well, wh why why does he prefer Colwell over our conventional left backs? Does he does he not trust does he not trust Trill? Does he not trust Kukurea? Does he not trust Martin? Does he not think defensively they're capable? Does he think Colwell's better going forward than them? I I, I don't have the answer to that. But you know, another, another issue I've got a problem with why is he persisting with Enzo, Enzo Fernandez as a number ten? Enzo Fernandez is not a number ten. We've seen it for the last two games against Forest and Bournemouth. It doesn't work. It doesn't suit his game. It doesn't suit his skill set. He, he's a deep-lying playmaker, and yet he's trying to make Enzo Fernandez as a 10 with Gallagher playing deeper. I don't think Gallagher's an out-and-out -out number 10, but he's more of a, he's, he's a better number 10 than Enzo Fernandez. Is. Enzo needs to be dictating play from a deeper position. So, you know, there's no wonder that the last couple of games for Enzo have been probably two of his worst games this season, and probably two of his worst games for Chelsea, because he's being used in a position which doesn't get the best out of him when we have other options to go to go to go in to go in that position. I I I I don't get it. I don't get it. So Pochettino's got some questions to answer in regards to his team selection and his in-game tactics. What are we doing? Why are we doing this? Why are players continually being played out of position? He's not he's not to blame for everything that's going wrong right now, but tactically, team selection wise, that absolutely falls on him. And there's some big questions that need answering. And there's clearly some obvious answers fr from from my perspective, but he doesn't seem to be doing it. He seems to be stubborn or he seems to believe that what he's doing is working with, with, with the players in the positions that he's playing them in. But something's got to change. And for me, we cannot continue in this situation. All I want to see is Enzo Fernandez playing in, in, playing as a deep line playmaker. I want to see Levi Colwell play as a centre-back. I want to see Ben Chilwell play as a left-back. It's not asking much. It's not asking much. But that's my first point. Pochettino's tactics and team selections are, are majorly baffling uh, right now at this point in time. My second point that I want to raise, and it's standard, it's par for the course these days, but our attacking woes continue. The game against Aston Villa was the 13th time, yes, you heard that correctly, 13, 1-3, 13th time that we failed to score in a Premier League game this calendar year. Now, I know a lot of those heart back to last season. It's kind of a fresh start, new Chelsea, new squad, but the same problems are persisting. And it's been the story of our season so far on the pitch, a lack of cutting edge, which is costing us points every single week, even against, even in the Villa game. Again, we created opportunities, but zero composure in the 18-yard box. Absolutely nil. Chilwell missed a great chance. Enzo missed a great chance in the first half. Jackson, again, had a good opportunity. Sterling, I, I don't even want to talk about Raheem Sterling. Absolutely criminal levels of finishing. Criminal level of finishing. You know, no ruthlessness required to finish anything whatsoever. Um, you know, and, and, and to make it even worse, the one time we did put the ball in the back of the net, we were offside. We were offside. And I don't think we can keep playing the cards. Oh, the underlying numbers were good. We played well. But if we're going to do anything, and as, as I said many times before, guys, 
I don't worry about us defensively. Midfield, the balance is fine. We, we, we will improve in there. But if you can't score goals, then you are going to struggle to win any games of football. And that is exactly what is happening at the club right now. And this is where I, I do have some slack with the manager because he can't make the players put the ball into the back of the net. For whatever reason right now, confidence is on the floor, lack of understanding, may, maybe just a lack of ability. I, I, I don't know. But we cannot finish anything. We can't put the ball in the back of the net. And it, it, was, it was summed up perfectly when Sterling was through on goal. And he could have just tapped it to, to his to his right and, and, and Jackson would have had an absolute tap in for a goal. Instead, he put it straight at Martinez. Decision making atrocious. You know, it's it's not good enough. It isn't good enough. And we're going to struggle and stay in the bottom half of the table if we cannot improve our finishing and our performance in the attacking third of the pitch. That is a, that's, that's, that's another major, major issue. And one that doesn't really look like solving itself anytime soon. Nicholas Jackson, again, having a difficult game. Um, he's picked up a booking as well, so he's banned for the next game. That that then brings me on to my next point as well, is that my third point, the squad availability. Despite Chelsea having a having a largish squad, we got rid of a lot of players. Um, despite having a largish squad, we're now running out of options to, to, to pick for players to play. You know, got ravaged by injury, as we know, with, with, with players missing. Um, and now we've picked up another two suspensions. So the, the ongoing injury crisis wasn't causing enough selection problems for the gaffer. Now I've got two suspensions to deal with. Nicholas Jackson picking up his fifth yellow card of the season already in just six games. Maybe disciplinary issues there for him. Young player, bit of a hothead potentially. I know most of his bookings have been for, for dissent. Um, that needs to be stamped out. I know Pochettino spoke to him uh, in the week about you know, reining it in a little bit, goes and gets booked for blocking a quick goal kick. Stupid things, but he's now going to be suspended for the cup game against Brighton. We've also got Malagusto missing the next three challenges as well, you know, following his challenge on, on Dina. Uh, it's, it's, it's a real problem, you know. So not only that, we've got maybe Chuck Amanda Breyer straight, and he's not ready after a long-term injury. David Washington is young, raw, totally unproven. Uh, I, I don't think that's a suitable option. So we, we, we've got problems in, in, in terms of leading the line. Uh, for, for, for the next game. Gusto, again, missing the next three. Reese James still unavailable. So we're going to have to find a solution to, 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 the, to the woes at right back. It's probably going to be more than likely to see Axel de Sassi play at right back, uh, having having done that at, at Monaco on, on, on occasion. So we're going to have to shift him out to the right-hand side, it would see. Uh, up front, I don't know what we do, but the increasing amount of unavailable players, whether it's injury, whether it's suspension, is a real, real issue for us right now. And it's really severely limiting any chance we've got of getting the team together, getting the team to gel, building some cohesion, building some chemistry in an attempt to try and get our campaign up and running. But these injuries, these suspensions are putting more spanners in the works. They really are. Um, I'll move on to point number four and a point that um, I think needs making. I think one that we that we know Mikhailo Mudrik showing real ability again. It's a real threat. Second league start of the season, um, second consecutive start, and we got glimpses as to why the Ukrainian why the, why the Ukrainians rated so highly. Um, look, he's clearly an inexperienced player. He needs more minutes. He needs match experience. He needs to consistently deliver. But the talent is clearly there. You know, he was phenomenal for me in terms of that pass for for that reverse pass for uh, Nicholas Jackson in the first half. He couldn't finish the chance. A great run where we burned around Matty Cash uh, and put a great ball uh, in into the in, in, across the box, and there was no one there. Um, and another dangerous cross again, which just went past Enzo Fernandez. So look, with a bit more luck, he could have had two assists. Um, but a big mistake for me was taking him off as he was sacrificed for the red card. When you, when you, again this links back to my earlier point like Pochettino's tactics and, and substitutions not 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 adding up to me when you're down to 10 men and you're up against it you, you need an out ball you need someone that can do something you know we're going to hit the ball long we need someone that's got pace to run onto it make make something happen Madrid was that guy and yet he was sacrificed and we had no out ball with 10 men it, I, I couldn't it couldn't make any sense of it but again a, a most dangerous attacker making things happen he's direct he takes players on yes he might give the ball away at times but when he does get the ball and he beats a man or and he's and he's got that slight off pass like we saw for the Jackson thing, he he is he is slowly turning into our most attacking uh, so our, our most dangerous attacker, making things happen. And rightly show he, he should continue to play, but he shouldn't keep being sacrificed as the first player to be subbed off. It it, it, it doesn't make sense at all. He's the only one that looks like making anything happen at all. Um and leading on to my 
final point, people. What has Cole Palmer got to do to start a game for Chelsea? I don't know if the gaffer is slowly bedding him in um, following his move from Man City, but every time he's come on the pitch, he's looked levels above everyone else in terms of what he creates, in terms of his range of passing. A fantastic pass to set up that Ben Chilwell chance. A fantastic pass. What has he got to do to start a game of football for Chelsea? Uh, hopefully he starts in the, in the cup in midweek, but I, I like the point now where Gallagher needs to be dropped. He's not affecting games. He had a good start to the season, but he's not affecting games. He shouldn't be starting for Chelsea on a regular basis. Cole Palmer was signed to play right wing and number 10, uh, that, that area in the squad. We're missing our number 10 in Nkunku. Let's get him in there. Enzo Fernandez is not a 10. Get Cole Palmer in there. Allow him to cook. Allow him to do his thing. And we will see him have more effect and more influence on the game. Look what he's doing when he comes on. He created more big opportunities than anyone else in the game uh, when he came off the bench against Aston Villa. So uh, what, what what's he got to do to start? Again, linking back to my first point, Pochettino's tactics and team selections are not adding up right now, not making sense. Cole Palmer has to start. We need as many creative players, as many attacking players on the pitch as we can physically get away with due to our lack of cutting edge and our lack of goal scoring ability. Cole Palmer can put the ball in the back of the net. He can make things happen. Let's get this kid on the pitch and let's get him more minutes. Simple as that. No excuses anymore. We need to get him on the pitch on a regular basis, playing regular minutes for the football club. Simple as that, guys. Simple as that. But yeah, people, those are my five points, my five takeaways from the game against Aston Villa, another defeat for Chelsea. Uh, Carabao Cup action up next on Wednesday evening against Brighton. Let's hope for a slight change in fortunes in that one. I'm not feeling too confident. But yeah, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification button as always, people. And I'll catch you again in another video soon. Up the Chelsea and peace out, people.